Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. My name's Christina Braun. I've been with the company for about six years, and I'm on the customer success team. Uh, today, we'll present five simple methods to ensure that your instance of summon is kept up to date. And um, topics will include the client center, uh, account settings um, for users, some summon functionality, uh, usage reports, and I have provided a checklist of key releases, uh, release enhancements for this year, and some other ones that you may find helpful. So a little bit about the customer success team. Um, I've been with this team for about four years, and I always tell people, if you're unhappy, we're unhappy. So uh, we work with people with various different products with the company, make sure that they're working for you and working for you at a local level. Um, so we listen, we share, uh, we provide best practices, et cetera. Some of you on this call I have already worked alongside with, so welcome. So uh, let's just go over uh, the agenda. So I'll have the introduction, reviewing the client center, the functionality, usage reports, the checklist, and a little bit about training and outreach at the end. Um, before I begin, I just wanted to talk about what an incredibly interesting year we've had, all of us. And we noticed that a lot of libraries um, had to change on a dime and were pivoting. And I, uh, anecdotally, without naming names, I know some libraries that have gone from 15 people down to six. So people are doing more with less. Um, and a lot of uh, features that we figured at the end of the year um, if you manage up, you can just go through and say, you know, we've done the following things. Um, so we are aware of the unique challenges that have been posed um, and everybody's focusing on hybrid and remote learning um, and balancing the demands of the new normal, um, the new normal kind of changes. So um, what we're trying to do is just make sure that you're uh, very efficient. Uh, in a perfect world, which we have found out this year we do not live in, um, the best practices for management discovery are um, that kind of the who, what, where, when, and why, you know, who owns it, um, you know, engage with our community, which is the listserv and Luna, uh, find your cadence, this is annually, quarterly, trimester, weekly, uh, that you do certain things. Um, soliciting user feedback, and obviously working with Ex Libris, your CSM project, project managers, and support. So um, it is very important to determine who owns Discovery at your library, but I wanted to bring it down to kind of a realistic level uh, this morning. So regardless of what interface you use, uh, one of the things you want to make sure is that you've got the right users. So whether you use the old school uh, classic interface with uh, the client center or you sign in through Intoda, it is important to go in and double check um, your, your accounts, who's in there, your library settings, and also just view changes depending on the size of your library. I know many of you are very tiny um, and it might just be you, but I also know many of you are much larger. So in the client center accounts, what we recommend to do is just go through and review um, and get rid of old ex and expired users and administrators. Um, but in that quick hit, we want you to kind of think on a bigger level, which is who should be your backup? Who needs to be trained in the future? Um, confirm your current users and administrators, and also just confirm and make sure that um, those newer users are signed up for the listserv. Uh, in addition, in your library settings, um, I always recommend once a year you double check your IP addresses in there. Uh, this is really for 
our support people so they can better triage your tickets when they come through. And uh, obviously an important tidbit to know. And then finally, um, double check and see if you're not doing it yourself the last time uh, information was input into um, your holdings. So did you add or delete something? Um, did you change something, et cetera? Um, and hopefully it's been within the last year, but if it hasn't, um, that might be something you wanna look at. So some of the functionality um, that we talk about using is having, um, uh, in Summon, is having a full catalog mode of your library catalog. And then that's kind of the short term. And then the long term is potentially requesting changes to your library location mapping. Um, I'm working on the assumption that you just, some of you just started working with Summon this year. So you probably don't know about the uh, full catalog load. And also, if you're just working on it this year, um, as part of your workflow process, we would recommend that you check your library location mappings at least once a year. Um, why do we say this? Well, a lot of times they don't change, but a lot of times they do. And sometimes the last time people looked at these was at implement implementation. So at this point, we're going back, depending on your library, uh, nine or 10 years. But again, it's always just something very helpful to kind of look at. I'm going to move over to the uh, Summon Admin Console, and I want to show you um, the back end that I'm sure all of you are familiar with. So we've got our settings and mappings, pages, usage, translation, recommender, and content ingestion. How do you know if you need a full, uh, full catalog load? Two things. You either have some in the E version where you don't have a catalog or OPAC uh, as part of this, or um, you have something up here called mapping. That's how you can confirm that a catalog has been at some time loaded to your location. So even though this is the long-term kind of goal to eventually look at this, uh, that's how you know, and you can export these and review them or somebody else on your team can review them. Now, how do I know if I've done a full catalog load and when did I do it? Well, uh, I think this goes back about two or three years but you go into content ingestion and look at the second subfolder, which is called new full load notification. And we'll let that just come up eventually. Ah, the joys of working from home. Okay. So, this is just a random demo site, but um, this is how you'd know. It says, okay, on, they requested a load back on a full catalog load back in April, 2018. Oh, horrors. No, you should do it a minimum of once a year in a perfect world that we don't live in. But if we did, we'd like to see you do it about three times a year. Um, so you go in, you load your catalog, you put in the expected number of records, and you put in the file name and extension, and then you press load, and then eventually uh, something will update here and it will say received. Then if there's anything wrong with it, trust me, our people will contact you and let you know right away. Um, and then we've taken what was a six to eight week process and we've narrowed it down to about three or four, uh, depending on the size of your holdings. Um, and what will happen is you'll see that, you know, it's it's ongoing or once you go live, it'll say it's live and the date. So again, if you have a catalog, you do want to um, do a new full catalog load at minimum once a year. Scott, are there any questions so far? Uh, let me check. Uh, yeah, there's one question that just came in is, how does the advice to do full loads at least once a year apply to summon over all my sites? It does not. Okay, uh, if there's another one, uh, 
Yeah, there's another question that came in that says, uh, you mentioned doing the full load three times a year. We've been doing four times a year. Is that unnecessary? No, you are an A-plus student. Um, actually, I would love it to be four times a year. I think it's easier to remember to do things quarterly at an organization. And also, um, with our new summer release, we recommend you know around that time when you're looking at a new release to do the full catalog load. And yeah, I'm making a lot of broad strokes here. I mean, nobody knows your library like you guys do. Um, these are kind of some sweeping generalizations sometimes. So, you know, some people may be, you know, I know a one business library that they just do all their changes in January. That's it. Um, and they never touch it again to the next year in their renewals. But I know that doesn't apply to anyone. So four times a year is terrific. Uh, and on the Converse side, uh, somebody asked, why would we necessarily want one to do one every year? I think it's important because uh, we have a lot of changes going in and it's accurate and it'll benefit your patrons in the end. So when you're doing searches, uh, things like that, um, and adds deletes, it just gives you the cleanest possible catalog load for your patrons to search from. And it would eliminate problems. A lot of times it eliminates problems with known item searches. You don't have any other questions. Okay. I'll give you an example. Um, I was working with a library and they said, we have all these known items, you know, we have this, we have this, we have this. And we went through and they gave us about a dozen examples and all dozen examples showed us that um, they they basically came from the catalog and they weren't an e-resource so um it just hadn't caught up with the system at that point so um there are a lot of uh hands in the pie so i think that's important to uh do like i said once a year as part of your kind of library housekeeping So um, all of these, and you'll get this later, um, have links to the Ex Libris Knowledge Center. So it'll help you um, go through step by step. So recently, uh, you've all received a uh, notification that we were changing the Oracle Business Intelligence uh, OBI to the Oracle Analytics Server OAS. Uh, for usage reports. So it was really a back office um, event, but um, I do always like to remind people um, what is available to you out of the box. Um, with, with Oracle, if you have the time and the bandwidth and the knowledge, you could go in and start a report from scratch. Um, and that's a wonderful scenario if you haven't. If you don't, uh, we have several out of the box uh, reports that work for our libraries globally. And these are the main ones. So if you're looking at collection development, we always recommend that people look at popular searches and zero result searches um, so we can identify uh, your gaps in coverage and things like that. Uh, for assessing user behavior and also kind of an end of the year task, um, any of the usage reports, whether it be action, session, title, device. And I think you guys probably already know this, but it's also very helpful in managing up. So we've had this remarkable year where everybody went from working at, many of you went from working at a physical library to working uh, remotely um, and everybody's doing new things. Uh, the usage and, uh, you know, you had, you most likely had an increase in usage uh, when you switch to remote. So um, there are important things to kind of look at there when it comes to staffing and budget and things like that in the long term. But for now, it also captures how you've handled the, the year called 2020. So many of you uh, are familiar that we do a quarterly release uh, four times a year. 
Uh, we've been doing this, I think, for the past few years, ever since we merged ProQuest and Ex Libris merged. Uh, it was one of their best practices. It works very well for us. We are constantly working and improving things on the back end, but um, these are visible, um, deliberate changes that happen that you have to activate on your end. So we have the summon releases for this year. So we had February, um, where we had the introduction of CDI, um, several new facets, uh, the ability to search for authors at, or co-authors by ORCID IDs. And I'm going to talk about all these in a few minutes. Um, in May, we got a lot of feedback that things were just nuts. So a lot of people didn't want to um, have to deal with a release with a lot of information in it. So we, we heard them and we applied that and only had a very limited release with these two items. Uh, in August, again, we had the add this, you know, able to um, do course ID and course reserves. We improved our peer review labeling, which comes from our uh, uh, Ulrichs. Um, and we also had accessibility improvements as well. And in perfect alignment with 2020, our November release became a December release, uh, which I believe the preview starts today. Um, and then the release will be the 16th. So that these are going to be the newer um, items that you can test out in your preview environment. And just on that note, let me just show you something. So when you go into your um, Summon Admin Console, for those of you who haven't used it, there is a preview environment. The preview environment uh, used to only be available two weeks prior to release. However, now it's available all the time. The only caveat is when we have a new release, it's only available for the new release two weeks before. You can't see it before that. But otherwise, you can go in and kind of test things out, uh, which I always like to do, um, whether it's testing new features, improving, you know, branding, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and you'll see on the left-hand side of the screen, it'll say that it's a preview section. Uh, one of the things, um, if you're in a perfect world, if your library has a discovery committee that approves and decides collectively what they're going to put on, uh, how they're gonna do releases and what they're gonna turn on um, and so on and so forth, one of the things I really recommend is um, basically um, just trying it. I like to remind people that um, turning on a feature is not a tattoo. If everybody hates it, you can turn it off the next day. Um, so um, it's sometimes it's worth trying something once. Um, so now we have some of the newer features, new and other helpful enhancements features from this year. So I'm going to talk about the new ones. We talked about the summon uh, release, uh, but I also just want to remind you that we have the summon release schedule, and this is a link to the uh, BKC. And um, okay, so we have the summon release schedule, but have it now for 2021, um, the end of this year and then 2021. So just for those of you who are, are big into scheduling, just to give you a heads up. So uh, we also have release notes that come out every quarter with our quarterly release as well. Uh, and you can find those uh, also in the AC uh, Client Knowledge Center. Sorry, I have a tendency to use acronyms. So, um, so the summon release notes, they come out with everyone. Um, what did we do this year? We did a lot considering. So one of the major things was we had the Central Discovery Index, CDI, that everybody was, um, the majority of people were put on uh, about February, I believe, 2020. 
um, and that has a uh, that comes with a variety of changes. Many of them um, are pretty seamless for some users. Uh, the only change is those of you with Summon Over Alma or um, Primo. That would have been a ra more radical change. So uh, I'm going to go through these in a minute. Um, some other things I just, for those of you, if you just take it over, um, you're probably like, well, what was release, released last year? What was released the year before? Here are some helpful links that the majority of our libraries use. Again, you're the expert, but here they are in case you want to use them. The one thing I would recommend, and especially in a COVID environment, is make sure that you save search enable if it's possible. Um, this allows your patrons to save their searches long term, not just in the session, but um, for just the session, but in Google Docs or Microsoft Overdrive. I see we have a question or two. Or no? Yeah, we, we do have a couple of questions. Uh, they go back to the catalog load. Um, one is, uh, should we include eBooks in, as well in uploads or just print books? At this, um, in a broad statement, I would say print books, but check with us. Most of your eBooks should be, um, should be able to load those in the client center. Okay, and uh, we don't have, uh, uh, we don't have any other questions. Oh, uh, this is a question um, for the libraries who submit a full load three or four times a year. Do they not submit daily updates or deletes? No, nope, that still happens. Uh, you still do your daily, you know, daily, weekly maintenance of ads, deletes. Um, it's just to cover that you have uh, the latest and greatest. Perfect. Uh, yeah, no other. Okay, thank you. So again, these all kind of click to uh, how you can do them. Um, and I just thought that might be helpful for some people who may have responsibilities they never had before. This is kind of your cheat sheet uh, to look at some things. So we talked about the Central Discovery Index that was launched in February. Um, it includes things such as improved performance and an upgrade to what is called Solar 7. So that's really, again, a back, back office thing that's relatively seamless to you, but it does allow you to do some new things such as um, uh, provide new facets such as author creator, search by uh, collection, and um, search by title or author. We've made several match and merge improvements as well. Um, and I mentioned this later in the presentation, but I highly recommend you watch our match and merge um, YouTube video. Uh, I think it's helpful just to remind those of you who it's been a while um, how the index works and what the logic is behind it. Uh, now we're allowed to have the ability to search for um, authors and co-authors via ORCID IDs. And now we have several new, um, numerous new content providers and institutional repositories available to you. So again, getting back to the Summon Admin Console, um, this is something with author and creator where you just drag from disabled to enabled. So this one's enabled. Author. Um, and your courses, course IDs and numbers will come up later, but this allows you to do the same thing. You can take it from disabled to enabled. So the match and merge improvements um, was based on the feedback we got about uh, duplicates. So they've added newsletters to the merge process. 
to, re to reduce the overall footprint of these content types because uh, that was causing some duplication. They've also improved the subtitle handling um, to reduce the number of merges to prevent um, variations by subtitle. And they've also increased the overmatch limit so that improves the matching of records with uh, exceptionally nar large number of duplicates. We have a little bit more relaxed language than we did in the past. So uh, that resolves uh, some issues between the system language and the uh, language detected. The standardized quotation marks uh, don't prevent from uh, merging records as it did in the past. And we have a much more, uh, much more global solution to handling uh, synonyms with the example of the English color versus, or the American English color versus the British English color. The WhatsApp integration, this was something else that came off this year, came out this year. Um, basically, it enables you to go into the back end and activate it. You just turn it on or off. And then, of course, always remember to save. Um, all chat logs and other functionalities are provided by WhatsApp, meaning they are a separate vendor, but we include them on um, in the summon functionality. So, peer review labeling and open access labeling. I wanted to start here. So, for open access and peer review, we have two things you can do in the summon admin console. So we have an indicator, which is the universal standard kind of icon, purple or orange, depending on it, whether it's peer reviewed or open access. Um, and you can activate those here. Um, and then we also have it. So here we have it. We also have it as a facet. So you have to activate it in two places if you want that to work. So here is the peer reviewed indicator. And here's the open access indicator. So that little open orange icon. Purple uh, peer reviewed icon as well. If you wish to refine your search by open access. Um, or peer reviewed or library catalog, you can do that here. Any questions so far? So, yeah, we got a couple more questions. Uh, a couple of questions uh, came. Uh, one is uh, when adding a new database collection in Summon, how can we check if the database contents, such as articles and ebooks, are being retrieved correctly in Summon? Uh, could the DBI decode be? Uh, could the DBI code be useful? How? I think I, under, yes, um, I think I understand the way I understand it. If not, by all means, let's email me at the end um, so we can help you individually. But yes, DBIDs are database um, identifiers. And okay, no, sure. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, they, can, they can show you how to search, what you're searching and how it comes up. And I'll um, add actually that link uh, to this presentation for Scott. Uh, next question is, uh, if you don't have ebooks from the catalog and just have selected and summon, uh, would that resolve the issue of having ebooks linking to the record in the catalog? There are a lot of what ifs in that scenario, uh, depending on your system. So uh, do you have them in print and E? Do you have them um, activated one and not the other? And are they uh, kind of subcategorized by years? 
So um, I think that's a broader discussion. Again, email me. Okay, uh, uh, we'll send you Christina's uh, email address. Um, and then the final question that I have, I think, um, is uh, our course IDs only for Alma customers? Correct. Summon over all the customers okay. at this time. Okay. And that's all I got right now. And then uh, to the ones uh, at the end. Sure. Sure. So I'm going to go through just a little bit of the um, training and outreach. Again, the Ex Libris Knowledge Center is the place to go uh, if you want information, whether it's product documentation, whether it's um, Product documentation. Sorry, my my coffee just stopped working. Um, or webinars or videos to learn the product. I'm just gonna pretty much go in here pretty quickly. Well, I'm sure all of you are of this. I just like to point out a couple different things. Uh, you do not need a username or password to access this. Uh, you know, this is one of our big practices of transparency. Um, I think it's important to port, uh, point out a few um, items here. I think the system status is a good one. Uh, this is where um, it shows our system status, and you can also subscribe to an RSS feed to notify you when things are um, down for some reason. Our uptime is is in the 99 point something percentile. Uh, we don't have the end of year number yet, but um, if there is maintenance or items like that, you can go in here and see that in advance as well. Uh, for those of you, um, those of you, uh, if you need to open a ticket, this is where you do it. If you don't know how to open a ticket or don't think you have access, um, that's something you, you should discuss. Um, and then I think there are a lot of important things in here, but the other thing is the idea exchange. And this just allows you to um, basically promote ideas and um, features that uh, your the collective community are recommending and get, get your weight behind that as well. Instead of us telling you how to use the product, you guys are telling us how you want to use it. And it's been a very successful, um, you know, uh, practice over the past few years. Uh, so we had several uh, webinars by my colleagues, my esteemed colleagues this year. One of them was getting the maximum value out of Summon. Um, another one by, uh, my coworker Patty, which was pretty terrific, is pushing past perceptions, getting your colleagues to invest time and attention to Summon. Uh, and then uh, Brent gave Summon features and functionality refresher as well. So this link provides you to the uh, recorded webinars. So uh, I mentioned this earlier that the match and merge story um, is a webinar that I think is worth watching. Um, you know, even if you've been using the product for a long time, things have changed since you were probably first trained in implementation. So uh, this helps you kind of better understand the CDI process and um, our rules and regulations for putting things into the CDI index. So um, if we get the same publication from a publisher and an aggregator, and uh, let's say it's several ag aggregators. We take that record and we make sure that it has the proper matching points. And depending whether it does or doesn't, um, it either goes into one record or if there is something outside of that, uh, and it doesn't fit the mold, they'll have a separate record. Um, but I think it's important to know that we take all their metadata and merge it together. So we're not eliminating what Gale does or what another aggregator does. We're including it all. It's very at a very inclusive process. 
and I recommend that as well. Uh, one of the things I want to highlight um, is, and God will correct me if I'm wrong, is we have our online uh, support chat um, for Summon 360 and Atota Services questions um, available um, Monday through Friday during these periods. Um, you can also access it through the Client Center in Atota, um, and also bookmark or visit these two here. So this has been very helpful getting people a, a lot of um, live help um, and getting them through their their struggles with the changes that they've had this year. And we highly recommend that they do that. Any questions, Scott? Yeah, uh, we do have a couple more questions that have come in. Uh, let's see, um, is a full load preferable to incremental loads? Yes. But it depends on how huge your catalog is and how much time it'll take and what's been recommended to you in the past. So as a rule of thumb, it's a full catalog load with your daily, weekly, monthly ads, deletes, whatever um, cadence your library is on. Okay, uh, the next question is, uh, we have a bit of a confusion as we have scholarly and peer review. The peer review indicator reflects peer review and not scholarly? scholarly? It, it, it reflect, if it, it could also be scholarly, but it is peer reviewed and it is identified as peer reviewed because of um, standards that's used as all X. Okay, and the last question at this point in time is, uh, this week we've come up against summon results indicating full text available for articles that are not available full text. In each case, the publication is indexed, but some issues are citation only. Is there a recommended uh, approach for this? Um, again, loaded, uh, and we'll, we can talk about this um, on your individual basis, but um, things happen uh, without a specific publication in mind. I know, uh, for example, um, some publishers have uh, embargoes on certain things and they're only available at a certain time that can cause things like that. Um, there, you know, there could be a possible error um, and we could also um, maybe double check what you had loaded into the client center and wondering if it's the right package possibly. Um, again, uh, without an example, um, you know, the possibilities are endless, but that's something we can help you with. Okay, uh, and then uh, another question is, um, who should I reach out to to get more information on using um, OAS? Two things. Um, uh, I can help you with that. Uh, there are also some uh, webinars on the CKC. Um, and also, if you reach out to me, I can... Um, uh, either myself or one of my colleagues can help you out as well. Okay, um, I don't have any other uh, questions. If you navigate to the last slide that has that email address um, uh, on there and make some concluding remarks, that would be fantastic. So again, um, coming to the end of the year and beginning a new year, um, I'd just like to remind people to um, keep in mind the summon release schedule. Um, also, review the features for 2020 that I've presented, and also those helpful ones uh, are worth a, just a quick review uh, if you can. Uh, when in doubt, I would try a feature. Again, it's not a tattoo. We can change it the next day. Um, and then just kind of think in more of a strategic le level of who your admins are. Um, when was the last time we did X um, with our holdings? Just general kind of uh, user uh, end of year cleanup, including confirming IDs. Um, again, um, I really want to 
for us taking advantage of the live chat option in the client center to connect with technical support analysts. Um, a lot of the questions that you've provided today could also go there or myself. Um, for linking uh, cases, we suggest taking a blank Word document and filling it with screenshots and the links to the URLs when it's submitted in a case. So we don't have to um, track multiple support tickets if it's a complicated one. Um, also, use the listserv. Um, connecting colleagues with colleagues, they can help you troubleshoot, give you ideas, um, and you can have open discussions of what is working and what is not working with Summon. And then last but not least um, is to use the idea exchange to advocate for the changes that you want to see. So this is your product. What do you want to see moving forward? Um, so those were my big things. Please feel free to reach out to me. I'm here, um, you know, the rest of this month and beyond, given the COVID situation. Um, and again, I just want to thank you for turning on a dime this year and adapting at your libraries to this highly unusual year um, and learning new skills when you had to. And thank you again for being our customers.